Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning, and the sun is shining, and it's January. It almost makes me want to do a little happy dance. It's, we don't always get to see the sun much in January. So I'm super thankful for that this morning. Um, tell me, as you join, what are you thankful for this morning? Good morning. What are you thankful for this morning? I am thankful that the sun is shining. I didn't even have to use my light this morning because there's sun coming through the window. That's huge. That's, that's just a great start to the day when you see the sun. It's a little thing sometimes, right? So good morning. As you join, let us know what you're thankful for. Sunshine and coffee. What a combo. Yeah, I like it. Good morning. My family. I'm thankful for family too, Grandma. Good to see you on here. Good morning. Good morning. Let us know what you're thankful for this morning. And we're going to pick up where we left off. Matthew 5, uh, verse 43. And then we'll finish the rest of Matthew 5. So I'll give you a minute to find that. As more of you share what you're thankful for this morning. We know gratitude is really powerful, right? And we, we preach about it on Thanksgiving each year, but it, gratitude is truly powerful. It truly rewires our brains. Friends and stillness. I like that. That's good. Good morning. Good morning. Grandkids and great grandkids. What a blessing, Carrie. That's awesome. Faith, family, fitness, friends, fiance. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's jump in. Let's jump in. This is, especially for the people in this time, really, really difficult teaching of Jesus. Because um, it, it really went against everything they thought they knew. And for us, it's going to go against everything in our instinct. Okay? So, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So that's, that's difficult. Um, there was a term, Jesus says, You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Hate your enemies was something that some of the religious teachers were actually uh, teaching. Okay, People were familiar with this term. And so... There were some religious groups that were kind of isolationist, separationist, who um, believed that God taught things like hate your enemies. And, and they taught that to God's people. Okay? And Jesus is saying that's, that's so wrong. That's so the opposite of God's will. In addition, the Pharisees, who Jesus always is harsh on, they interpreted a couple of passages uh, Leviticus 19, as one of them, is teaching that they should only love those who love them in return. And then they twisted some of the Psalms to mean that they should hate their enemies. Okay, And they were teaching this. And Jesus knows that some of them are there and they're listening. And so he's going to hit this hard. But Jesus doesn't just stop there. He doesn't say, don't hate your enemies. He says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Wow, like that's that's not easy, right? So how do we do that? Um, and of course people would ask, well, who, you know, how far does that extend, etc. But to love your enemies, it doesn't have to be an emotion, right? You don't have to feel all kinds of love for your enemy. You're probably not going to feel that. Um, it's loving actions. Okay. So to love your enemy, that's loving actions, helping them in a time of need. Okay. Not forsaking them to kind of get back at them. Um, not being, passive-aggressive toward them, 
but praying for them and blessing them in little ways, killing them with kindness. Okay, so all of those things, that's how we love our enemies. Then Jesus gives us an example of how his father does this and displays this. In verse 45, he says, So that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. So God is not uh, partial to who he grants rain to or sunshine to. The sunshine that we have today, it's a, it's a gift to all of us, right? To, to all people. And here's the thing, when you, when you don't love your enemies or when you get, try to get back at your enemies, how do we represent God? Does it ever leave the door open for those people to come to Christ if Christians are hating their enemies. It doesn't, right? So it's not missional when we hate our enemies. We have to love our enemies. We have to bless our enemies. We have to help them in times of need. Okay, so he, he talks about how his father does this as well. Verse 46, For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Okay, so Jesus is telling them this teaching to only love those who love you back and hate your enemies. It's the easy way out. There is nothing revolutionary about that. Uh, nothing revolutionary about only loving those who love you. That doesn't set you apart as my people because even the tax collectors do that. Tax collectors were the worst of the worst uh, in people's eyes in that day. Jesus says, you're, you're not setting yourself apart and you hate your enemies. Okay, verse 47. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? So Jesus gives us another example of this, okay? That the Gentiles do this, it does not set you apart if you don't love your enemies. So J Jesus practiced what he preached, right? You think about what happened to Jesus on the cross, not just physically, but emotionally, the insults, the mocking, the way that he was persecuted, Okay, and he responded in love. I don't know about you, but when I see someone mocking me or gossiping about me, my first reaction is, my first instinct is not to love them, right? It's just not. It's in our human nature to have that instinct of revenge. And that's my first instinct. But, and Jesus, he could have so easily done that, right? As he stretched out on that cross, he could have looked over at these people mocking him. And he, he literally could have just flicked his finger and just sent them to the center of the sun and they could have burned, gone away. But he doesn't do that, okay? That's not the example he sends for us. He had all the power to do that and he did not. He did the opposite. He prays, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. That's powerful. So when we say we can't do this, we can't love our enemies, it's too hard, or this person does not deserve my love, or this person does not deserve my forgiveness, you don't know what they've done to me, not so fast, okay? Look to the cross. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were enemies of God, he loved us, he gave everything to forgive us, okay? So we can do the same. We can do the same. Jesus closes with this. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that's, that's difficult. It's difficult enough to end on. It's something that we should strive for. Okay? It's something we should strive for every day. But it's also something that would hit these religious leaders right between the eyes because they thought they were perfect. And Jesus is teaching them all the reasons why they're not. And it points us to our need for a savior, right? It points us to humility. It points us to a need for forgiveness, a need for eternal life, for someone to, to usher us in because we can't be perfect. And that's what Jesus would display through his life by loving his enemies and giving his life for his enemies so that we can be with him forever through our faith in him. It's an incredible gift. So with that, let's pray. Good morning, Lord. Uh, we're thankful for so many things today, and we're thankful for your word as well. Lord, this is a difficult teaching. We know that when we think about our enemies, uh, that stirs up a lot of different 
emotions, a lot of different memories, some really difficult things. And yet you call us to do some difficult things as your followers, to love your enemies just as you did. And so Lord, give us the strength to do that. Forgive us when we don't get it right, but help us to remember the way that you loved your enemies on the cross and, and what that does for us. So we're so thankful for that gift this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for hanging out this morning. We'll be live again tomorrow morning to uh, start on Matthew 6, and then we'll be live Sunday morning for worship. So God's blessings, everybody. Uh, be thankful for something today. Enjoy the day. Enjoy it when the sun does pop out, and we'll see you soon.